Hello everyone, this is Zelks here today with a different way of how I usually do my reviews. This time because there's a lot of cards for each class, so I decided to go through each of them separately. So for to this video here, I will be going through the neutrals and just letting you know my thoughts and what ideas I came up with the moment I saw each card. So first up, let's just quickly get into it. First one, Elena, Defier of Destiny, definitely the star of this expansion. Uh, this expansion, you have a lot of text on this one. This one play point card single handedly give you access to every single leader card that has been printed from like when I forgot when they actually came out, but they came out at one point in time. And Elena, when you play, you discard one of your class card to trade it out for one of the leader cards from each class. Uh, currently, what I immediately thought of when I saw this card is, can I actually use Shadow to steal some other class's card and then get them into my hand and then discard them for a leader from the other class? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. There is Death Store open in rotation right now, which I might try pairing with Elena and some for some tea shenanigans that might happen but honestly that's still in meme territory uh, aside from that in portal craft there is also the one of the machina followers with there's a two mana one three storm that can give you a draconitron which is a dragon craft follower so you could potentially get a rowan in portal craft if you need be which may or may not be good so, but aside from that, power level of this card, uh, some users that I can think of her right off the top of my head, using you. Okay, first things first, uh, she's a discard one, so in shadow, you can use her as a one mana gain two shadow, which is really good. Also, gives, gives you Luna Soul Keeper, which is a really good shadow generator, two mana for two shadow, draw two cards, and also as a necromancy user, which is honestly really good. And then, it, not just that, Luna as a card on Evolve gives you a Leo of Shadows, which is another Thief card, which I really like Thief cards. Two mana, destroy a follower that costs 5 or less, and if you're a Necromancy 8, summon a copy of it. With this setup, you can get Necrom 8 Shadows really easily. Aside from that, Arisa Evergreen Arrow, she's getting buffed to a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, which is significantly better for Forest Craft. Uh, as for the card she gives, Forest Guardian Bow is an amulet that re that buffs all your followers by 1-0 at the end of turn, not that important. Re when it's returned to your hand, you draw a card when it uh, reaches countdown. It has countdown, when it's countdown 0, it also draws you a card. Not that, not that great, but you can probably have a niche use for it. I can't, personally, I don't see any good users with this. Whenever this attack follows attack or defense is increased by effect, you do want to all enemy followers. Could be used as bot control, but at this point, just play May. On Evolve, however, you can get a Gale Arrow or Storm Arrow into your hand. I don't know which one is which, but one of them forces your opponent to draw a card and then deal damage to them equal to half the number of cards in their hand, which is... Very situational, unless your opponent somehow managed to have a very full hand, in which case it could potentially do 5, which if you have 4 different copies of uh, Storm Arrow, I believe, you can OTK. Haha, <laughs> as though that is not very, very, very telegraph or something like that. Or the alternate version, which is a Gale Arrow, I believe, is the 0 mana spell that buff Arisa by 1 plus 1 plus 0, in which case it will proc the... Arisa's effect which will deal 1 to all enemy followers. Okay, you do 2 damage to all followers in 1 turn for like the price of a couple of cards and an evolve point. Honestly, I would just play Mei but you could probably find something with her. Next up, Erika, Loyal Sword Servant, Break Servant, Servant. However you pronounce it, 3 mana 2 1 Storm and ready 7 put killer instinct into your hand whenever a knight follower or amulet comes into play game plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn so first thing that i thought of with this can i otk very simple you probably cannot yet i say yet but you probably could there's probably a war but because every card is very versatile and a very strong sword card in general uh, having storm means you can go face and she can buff herself up to god knows how much amount 
a killer instinct is a zero uh, mana amulet so this will buff erica to a 3 1 if you have rally 15 erica slide summon 2 1 1 storms which will buff erica by 2 and then on top of the 4 attack she already has becomes a 7 3 storm on turn 6 7 6 actually because you usually hit rally 15 by turn 6 so you'll be at like turn 6 7 3 plus another 2 2 9 damage that is pretty good for a grand total of 0 mana and you can even play more cards to buff Erika even further because the formation uh damage right nine nine mana it costs only three mana. So you have still have three mana to work with. You can summon three more storm followers, which you we do have storm followers introduced for sword this expansion. I won't touch on them here, but we'll talk about them later. So you can this could potentially go up to what 12 damage in one turn. Is it 12 damage? One, two, two more for storm followers. Four, four plus. Oh no, actually you have a unit bot space for one. So maybe I say you play like three in the Terran Great Trees or something. So one killer instinct, three in the Terran Great Tree, two slides, and then Erika herself. Five, nine, ten. A lot of damage. Yeah, it, 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 Erika is a very scary card and poop. Probably not made really good, but it's definitely a red card you can play in rally. Next up, we have Isabel Intrepid Image. Decent card, a little bit slow. Fusion Runecraft followers, you can use it to, <laughs> to activate. Uh, what's that? Who's that card? Vengeful Pack. After Safi Rotator, Vengeful Pack doesn't really have a place since Spell um, Rune doesn't have much fusion base decks other than the other guy which is the wizard which i don't remember the name of and i'm too lazy to look it up now so you're gonna have to remember him he's that sorcerer guy so yeah then or once you fuse five rune cards he'll draw you five cards and reduce their cost to zero which is basically imagination relies but a lot worse but what does isabel do you basically fuse away rune craft followers and every time you fuse it to Isabel, you get a Quadra Magic, a Inside Crimson Sorcery, and if you evolve Isabel, you get Fate's Hand. And you spell boost all the cards in your hand and recover one play point. Which is really decent for spell boost. It was pretty good back in the day. I'm not sure how strong you'll be in rotation. Uh, if you don't know what Quadra Magic is, look it up. I, I'm a bit tired, so I won't be looking it up for you, unfortunately. But just off the top of my head, if I remember correctly, you have to play like 8 different uh, card names and then you'll get an uh, element of creation into your hand and then you can play that to do 10, heal 10 and change the reaper from the bottom of your deck into a card that just makes you not die instantly but lowers your max hit point by 5. Which honestly isn't as useful as it seems On that you will probably want to be more mana efficient with your spell boost cards anyways. Although I will say having insight and crimson sorcery is really nice but Running, getting, wanting to have Isabel in your hand means you have to run Elena, which is a one mana neutral, which is a, doesn't spell boost you. So do as it as you will. I you probably won't play Isabel for Isabel, but I will be trying stuff out with her. Next up, Rowan Dragon Lance, three mana, three two rush. Put a curse of drag, black dragon in your hand. Summon a dragon slayer spear. Uh, I'll try to my best to recall what these guys do. Curse of the black dragon is a spell, one mana spell that. At the end of your turn, if Overflow is active for you, you'll do 2 to a random enemy. If Overflow is not active for you, you do 2 to yourself. And Dra Dragon Slayer, uh, Spear is an amulet that basically says all your everything that you can do damage will do 1 extra damage to your opponent. And on last words, you will destroy a random random follower if my memory serves me right. So how good is he? Not that impactful? You probably won't play this in Big Dragon. Is there an OTK Dragon you can probably play this in? There is one variant where you could try with Forte and Miriam that one extra damage could be very useful. So it's the extra two damage. It, and in fact, the fact that you get yourself off Elena means that uh, Rowan won't be polluting your pool of Dragon follow Dragon Craft followers to, to pool when you play uh, Forte. So that means you doesn't get buff unless you play Elena and purposely have Rowan in your hand, in which case you're probably asking for the buffs to land on Rowan. But other than that, what other applications can I think of Rowan? Um, off the top of my head, AFK Dragon, play with alongside Fafnir, then just sit there, press, uh, get another 3 copies of Rowan, and then sit there, enter, and watch yourself just like ping your opponent for a lot of damage. 
And then you can even pair that with Valdain. Valdain reduces your opponent's hit points and then you just ping them for 6 if you have 3 Rowans uh, because of the Black Dragon in your hand and another few more damage if you have Fafnir. Basically just, <laughs> just AFK Dragon which sounds like a very fun deck and a very bad deck so I'll probably be trying it out soon. And we talked about Luna already. Next one, Urias, Final Vampire, super strong card. I don't even need to talk about how this card can potentially just single-handedly bring Ruff back. It actually maybe will bring Ruff back. It's, it's just that good. Urias is really good. Uh, it, if Ruff is active, you draw a card. Actually, you don't bother about Fanfare. When you play, the Fanfare usually isn't active. But what is important is the Horrible Knight. It gives you three different cards, which I don't remember the name of. But all of them have various effects. And they are all really good. That's all you need to know. Uh, I... Two days still look it up, so because time is of essence. But off the top of my head, they're all one play point. Would they give your leader a, very, a myriad of effects? One of them makes your leader not take any damage from effects on your own turn. One of them make, deals one damage to your opponent every time an enemy follower is destroyed. And the last one draws you an additional card at the start of your turn. Very strong leader effects. And not only that, I believe if you rise on the field, each of the tokens that you get from Horrible Knight also have additional buffs. I Just off the top of my head, some of them like what uh do you want to uh, give you an evolve point back uh deal three to a random enemy follower and something else i can't remember but all you all you all you write is a really strong card and if you're playing rough blood in this upcoming expansion you definitely need elena next up is Eris. i think she got buffed to a three mana two three which why would you do that uh she doesn't do anything anyways you get spear relic which banishes a follower with two defense or left less and then oh actually it's a one mana now because she recovers one play point on evolve right what you happens is that you summon a random relic prism sing, cylinder or alter relic while they are like do you want to an enemy follower heal one and do you want to the enemy leader if i remember correctly and then if you have like all four relics on board at the end at the start of your opponents then you will summon a relic goddess which is a six mana six six which is a Aegis follower which doesn't matter because she'll probably die to a myriad of reduced defense effects and then but one bad thing about Ares that even after you got relic goddess you still continue summoning the prism so if you're not careful you can bot lock yourself so be please be aware of that when you play Ares. But other than that, there's not a lot of good uh, ways of using her. She doesn't fit into any deck. Rally Goddess isn't good enough of a win condition. Yeah, maybe you can go for AFK win con with like one of these relics which does 3 if Rally Goddess is on board. But trust me, that's not a good idea. And yes. It's it's just, it's fine. You could, you could mess around with it. You, you'll probably want to play something else though. Last one, you want a Dimension Avenger also got buffed to a one mana one one, which is insane. Uh, what does he do? You basically procs resonance once for you, and then at the start of your opponent's turn, if resonance has activated five times, you deal four to a random enemy follower, and if it's activated ten times, you deal four to them. And if on evolve, you summon an analyzing artifact and the same line of the second pet wall of text. Basically, resonance support usually used as a finisher and you can also use it to shuffle invokes back into your deck potentially so cards like grotina one very card that likes to show up in my hand a lot so you can use that to shuffle it back in the deck and then you can also shuffle mikael back to the deck very good applications and just one thing that i found out when i'm messing around with uh like or theory crafting and all i realized elena is a neutral card you want is a portal card so we do have a card in rotation called antonita which you can use to duplicate elena and you want so theoretically you could have a lot of you wants in one game how practical is that who knows if rough is good this is not practical at all but uh, if rough is mediocre and you see more uh, decks that are not rough because of Ruias, then you may probably want to try a uh, resonance out. I'll, I'll probably only play this in alongside artifacts in a artifact resonance hybrid, because I don't see, think that's a very good and easy way of drawing through your deck consistently, like every poking resonance every other turn that easily. Well, I could be wrong, but we will need to look at the portal cards to uh determine anything. Next one, Technolo Origin. I think that's that's basically all for Elena, by the way. She's a very, very, very interesting card, I would say, and definitely one I will be getting three copies of just because of how much value she provides for every single class. 
if I want to give her a rating, 5 upon 5. Like, I'm definitely playing her in Deep Shadow, you're definitely playing her in Rough Blood, every uh, Rally Sword, Spell Wolves potentially, Castell Forest maybe, and Resonance Portal definitely. Like, there's, there's almost no... She's, she brings more, so much value. Just just craft 3 copies of her. It's really good for your, uh, account, uh, for your account. And even if she's bad, then... Well, you, at least you can have fun with D Shadow or something like that. <laughs> you know, end of the day. Next up, Technolo Origin 9 mana 6 6, uh, Makina Legendary. Uh, accelerate 1, deal 3 to enemy follow draw a card. Can only accelerate if you have 3 other Makina cards in hand. Deal a pool of X damage divided between all enemies. X equals the number of other allied Makina cards played this match. Okay, so first off, impressions this card is weak. Very weak. Why? Too slow, 9 mana 6 6, doesn't do much. Fanfare is a due uh, damage, which could be good, but the problem is that it it determines based on the number of other allied Makina cards you played this game. If you want, if I want to compare this with a card, uh, Forest Craft Ticket of Nut Hands. If you know that card, then you probably will have an idea of the power level of Technolo Origin. It's not even similar to that because, uh, of how Ticket works. You usually play actually Ticket can reach up to forty. 40 by turn 10, funnily enough. But on the, the DK counts every single card played and it was in a Forest Craft deck. However, Technolog Origin only counts Machina cards played, which is significantly worse because you don't run, you compared to Ticket, you don't run as many like cards per se. You know, you don't run as much Machina cards and just generic cards. But the difference between uh, this and Ticket is that DK actually splits their, his stacks between attack and defense and then the attack will go he only counts the attack to split among the opponent so in in theory this could be a little bit better like if you could get like 30 Makina cards split by turn 9 which isn't unreasonable this could hit the opponent for a total of 30 damage throughout the board which could be really really good but on the, on the other hand the accelerate one is also really good the deal de 3 to a follower draw a card, you cycle and you also count one extra damage, uh, one extra Machina plate for the Techno Lord. Well, actually the more I talk about him, the I see I'm starting to see more potential in him. It's not even if it doesn't work as a win condition, so long he doesn't mess up your tutor pool and you have a sufficient number of Machina cards in hand. You know what? He actually can be a win condition. I changed my mind. You can play a lot of decent, a lot of Makina followers, like maybe upwards of thirty. Technolog Origin might be a decent finisher, provided, provided. On turn nine, your opponent has a relatively small bot size. I'm gonna assume you have did some cheap damage through whatever means, and then your opponent maybe have played cards. I'll assume they are like what, six hit points, maybe three, four hit points across the board. In which case, maybe you need a lot more, but like 20, 10, you're at least hitting 10 to face, but let's be real. Not not as likely, but in the long game, Technolog Origin might eventually come out to help you close games. But because of his flexibility, I think it's safe to say that he is will at least be 4 upon 5 because of the Accelerate effect. Although you do need 3 other Machina cards, so you know, I'll knock it down a bit. 3 upon 5, still pretty decent. And for Machina cards, it's a definitely a, probably a must run. Next up, Benevolent Mother, Na Natural Legendary. With Rush and Bane, cannot be evolved using evolved points and can attack 2 times per turn. Basically, you train to 2 followers for 4 play points. Could be good, could not be good, depends. On last word, you also summon 2 Netherland World Trees, which you get 2 trees for Basic, you basically draw two cards, and if five allied natural world trees have been destroyed, you summon a benevolent mother instead, which and evolve it. So if you get a four four ward, potentially train to a third follower, and at the end of your turn, you also restore four defense and summon two more world trees. If you have the evolved version, which is really strong, basically what this can you can read this as is trade into three followers or four mana, a heal four draw two. And you you work towards your Netherrealm World 3 count. Very versatile, definitely really, really good. And the Bane means you can train to a lot of followers. Uh, off the top, I may hate any, any class that you want to run this in. 
of course most natural decks will probably wouldn't mind having benevolent mother in the deck she's really good actually okay even for last words I, okay i'm just gonna talk about last word shadow because i know this is a deck that from previous expansion so i can talk about it this counts as three last words leaf play which is really good or or if you have already have two natural world trees uh, five natural world tree destroyed this is like four last words in four mana which is really strong and you basically proc at least almost instantly with one with one but actually the moment you use that uh benevolent mother it trades in like three times they destroy it, at least it's active but there's a big problem with last word shadow that i will mention in one of the other classes section which well you're gonna have to wait and see and wait until the you can see the video for yourself but as the card itself is really solid we'll definitely see play at worst it's a draw one at best it's a, it does a lot for your deck super solid 4.5 for natural decks that wants to run it next one we have desert wanderer neutral goal uh it's a two mana two two summon a three which is decent it's a good stats and you draw a card or just set up for to draw a card by the way if you didn't know natural world tree has been changed in this resurgence set it is not a fanfare but it's so whenever this amulet comes into play you destroy the uh, natural world tree which is good really really strong by the way so it's a it's a well-deserved change otherwise if it's still a fanfare it would have been terrible but because of that change most of the all the natural natural cards that summon trees become exponentially stronger because they immediately just basically say draw a card so what's about Dasher Wanderer if, you, if it's on your evolve then it's a one mana four for summon two trees and basically you draw two cards with this for one mana which is pretty good one mana draw two is really good and you even work towards your three count so if you're playing a three deck that cares about trees this card is really good for you and it has really good set lines as well and you can still use the three play points to play for other cards which is really interesting and very very strong so right now since it's a neutral it's so versatile i'll give you a 4.5 that's what netheran pre uh piece to netheran world trees in your hand basically draw a uh, draw one and if five has been destroyed you restore two one mana heal two draw one draw or draw two depending on how you look at it you get a uh, world trees which is decent for three decks if you play this in a tree deck, you probably will play this so it's as good as how as good as natural decks are so for now you'll be a 4.5 because you will probably run this there's actually a lot of decks that could probably run natural uh, natural trees as a draw engine next up anarchy lizard three mana three three what summon a bullet bike bullet bike is a uh, two mana amulet that banishes itself when a, a light follow comes to play and give it plus two plus zero and rush uh first impression generic stat line three mana three three which honestly didn't i'm not excited about it why because generic stats doesn't do much it does give you a bullet bite which gives you a rush follower and extra attack which could be decent for trading and we uh, on the other hand we also have if you evolve this you get another lizard uh so you get a five five and a three three for three mana and you get two bullet bites potential for some shenanigans but at the three cost i feel like there's not much you can do with this i don't i don't know what is the innate strategy with this you maybe want to go for an ag aggressive deck in which case ready sword ready sword is a very storm focused deck okay maybe another card deck i can think about this okay i won't i won't spoil it here but i'm thinking of playing this in forest as well in shadow and an aggressive deck uh, maybe in portal as well portal might like the bullet bite as well plus two attack is pretty decent and maybe does rough have some followers not that okay we have do have hidone which could is really good so maybe we could have a chance of playing hido anarchy lizard in hidone the plus two attack could have application somewhere but i think it's more on the deck strength themselves and whether they will want to play a three mana three three or a three mana five five plus a three three actually the five five plus a three three is actually really decent so yeah that may be good you know what because of the attack which is really aggressive i will give this at least a 3.5 uh depends on what i need to see the rest of the class cards first and then i will give a more in-depth as uh, talk uh actually no I'll, I'll just tell you uh, i'll just tell you what this is on the days uh, on once the expansion releases but it's it's a pretty cool card 
Next up, Runes of Adalon. One mana, count down one, put a random marker follow from a deck to your hand. That's a tutor already for one mana. That's really good. You will probably play this in most decks where you want to draw a certain marker now follow or at least just draw a card. It also puts a recovery into your hand, which has been changed to restore one to your leader and two to all Machina followers, which is really strong. And if you have more evolved points, you draw a card instead. This card is this text is not as relevant, but if you do draw it, play it on your second going second, or yes, on your turn three, you can draw an extra card, which could be relevant. So this could be essentially be read as a one mana gives you three cards, three cards, which is really strong, and also a Machina card. So, you will definitely see play in a lot of Machina decks since it's just a generally good card, 4.5. That's how moving on, 2 mana, 2, 1, Hoverboard Speedster, she flips her stats around because I play her with her in take 2, Tacticians. Uh, you put a random Machina card from a deck into your hand, it's fine. If you have at least 3 Machina cards in your hand, restore 3 defense to your leader. You're never evolving this, you'll have better things to evolve. But drawing a random Machina card could be decent. You thin your deck, you draw a Machina card which could be a win condition. Then this also contributes to Machina cards played. Whether that is relevant or not, it will definitely be relevant in Shadow uh, depending on how much they like uh, Machina draw, but we have to take a look and see. But as of now, since it's just a generic tutor, 3 upon, f 3 upon 5. Next up, Revalon Outlaw, 1 mana, 1 1 rush, last words put Dutiful Steed into your hand. Into your hand. Okay. So it's a 1 mana, 1 1 card. It has rush. Generic start line, doesn't go face, you get a dutiful state with a 1 mana, key plus 1 plus 1 and banish this uh, amulet witch. Right now, I don't, seems pretty bad. If it would have been amazing, it says summon a dutiful seat. But uh, off the top of my head, some users for this. Let's see, last word shadow, because of last words. And then the buff could be used for ready sword and also the up new upcoming natural sword archetype, which I will talk about later on or not later on in another video of itself but also it's really generic so i can only give it a 3 upon 5 it's not really good but it's just middle of the road you you play if you have no other choice next one is Unia's reconstruction three mana card discard two draw two restore four to your leader really oh that's a lot of effects already for three mana you essentially go negative one in hand size but Okay, wait, if you have more evolution points, then your opponent recover two play points. Mm. So where would you want to play this? Discard Dragon. I like Discard Dragon isn't a thing anymore. But wait, I think there's still a card in Dragon that wants to be discarded, so you could use that. Uh, then in Shadow, this could be used to give you Shadows, which is really useful. And where other places could you use this? What is okay? It's technically a one mana draw two if you think about it in a way. So spell boost perhaps, spell boost could abuse this if you have more evolve points. But other than that, not a lot of good options. I mean, it's a draw two. It could help you control your hand size. Get no, your graveyard doesn't work in the way it thinks of it. The way it works if you just discard them because it discarding cards doesn't count as destroying them. So. I'm not sure. It's really generic. I don't. I don't still don't. I can't ju really judge the power level of this card. Is it's a negative one in hand size, so maybe it's not as good as it seems. But restoring four to your leader could be huge. Maybe you can count it as like just one mana heal for cycle your hand. You know, if you think of it that way, it definitely becomes a lot better. And maybe in a deck where you're a combo deck, you need to look for your specific pieces. You will play Insunia's Reconstruction, especially when you're on going second. So you can dig through your deck faster. You know what? In That's the scenario. I can definitely see Insunia Reconstruction seeing play. Therefore, I'll put it at a 2 upon 5. A niche, but very uh, would be a very strong cut and draw engine in the in the deck that you you will look for it. That's, oh, and that's, that's basically all of it for the neutrals. So thoughts on the neutrals, very generic, definitely a, seems a lot better than the neutrals from the previous uh previous expansions. I personally I think all of them have their place in the in each deck. And would, all of them will probably this is probably one of the few expansions. Actually, since the last expansion, I'm actually very surprised that all of the neutral cards can see play. I can see potentially see them all see play. So yes, that's it for the neutral. Uh, neutral card review if you want to check out the other other classes one 
it should be somewhere on the screen right now i'm just waving to the air you're you're not seeing it because my camera isn't turned on but yeah just click one of the fields or just go to my channel leave a like leave a subscribe i make shadowverse content and yes let's move on to the other ones see you next time